Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for I'd Fund That is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is I'd Fund That, Episode Zero, recorded May 10th, 2014. Hello and welcome to I'd Fund That, where we bring hopeful inventors to the Twit Brick House to see if they've got what it takes to survive in the brutal cutthroat world of online crowdfunding. Today we have four inventions that are midway through their funding periods and will, they'll be demoed for us by their creators. Our panel of judges includes Chief Twit, Leo Laporte. Hello, I'm, I buy anything, anything at all. <laughs> I take, I'll take all four. I'm sure they're glad to hear Sight that. Sight unseen. <laughs> all right. And Twitch CEO, Lisa Kensell. I don't know. I think I'm supposed to be the skeptic here. Yeah, so we, we got to come up happens. with another, <laughs> another label for you. Uh, skeptic will do for now. And myself, Mike Elgin. We'll Excellent. render judgment on the products we see today, give them our advice, and ultimately tell them, I'd fund that. Or we'll tell them to go fund themselves. <laughs> Joining us in the Twit Sky Desk to take your questions is Twit's Glenn Rubenstein. Hi, uh, I'm Glenn Rubenstein, and here to remind you that crowdfunding is all about your money. So jump in and participate in the show. While we are recording, you can ask questions of the different presenters. Go to bit.ly slash IFT questions, and I'll be giving out hashtags throughout the show so you can ask questions about each product that's being demoed. Also, I'll be back to give you po uh, straw poll links where you can make your voice heard, and I'll be bringing you results throughout the show. Because I don't think people believe me when I'd say I'd buy anything. This is a Kickstarter project I funded. Oh my God. It is called the Ostrich Pillow. It is designed for you to take a nap in. You put your hands in the holes and your face on the, on the desk and oh you nap. And he actually wore this on a plane and he was almost escorted this off. This was but, so successful know. on Kickstarter that they have done their second round, the Ostrich Pillow 2. We can hear you. Oh. It's just you can't hear yourself. <laughs> Hello? I'm not so sure I, just, I would find that. I just that. want to point out, I am an easy mark. All right, I'm sure they're glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's our first? Oh, wow. All right, our, our first victim, our first product is for <laughs> pet lovers on the go. And so why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves? I'm Ken Powers. I'm Zaville Powers. Hello. All right. Hello. I'm, we're pet owners. Yes. What, is, what is your uh, product? Well, it's an automatic Wi-Fi pet feeder. And <laughs> I invented this because I was on the go, and I had two cats that adopted my house as their own. And uh, when I left for a couple weeks going over to Thailand, I didn't have anybody to feed them. I didn't want to call my neighbor and have them come over all the time. So I started working on this about three and a half years ago. A couple of weeks, uh, that canister looks like you could leave for a year. <laughs> well, that's not, it's, it's, that's the outer part. Um, I see. I'll actually show you what it looks like on the inside. I actually patented the inside. And so I have uh, raccoons at my house, so I had to make sure that I could lock it up because the raccoons would just open, open it up. But uh, all the electronics are in the top, and it's, it's made so it easily goes on and off. It just fits right on. So all the electronics, once it's off, Everything below this point is, is stainless steel. And can be washed. And can be washed. So, you know, the top comes off and then... This you can is make the, coffee. And, and ice cream. <laughs> this is the hopper. The hopper has, you know, this is the patented portion of it. So the hopper just pulls the food up and over so you don't have an auger type. You know, the augers usually jam. And so that would push the food down, you're saying? No, it actually pulls the food up and pushes it over ah, at the same time. Clever. Okay. So clever. When this you say right patented, here, you've received the patent. Already. I haven't received the patent. So you have a, I've a already filed a, a PCT. So, you know, I, I think I'll have to file it within the next nine months. Okay. But uh, I, I don't have to do anything right now. Still uh, and covered. which specific part did you patent? This, this part here, actually the, the whole thing the whole thing is, I mean, sections of it are patentable. But the thing that is innovative is that and the Wi-Fi, I would guess. Um, I don't think that the Wi-Fi would be because, you know, you can Wi-Fi control anything. Right. And I, I'm not sure that that would be, but that's part of the patent, the part of the whole 
whole patent. Now, this is, before you go on, this is an interesting category because there were a number of products uh, five, six, seven years ago, uh, mostly coming out of Japan, and they all sort of faded away. And you, there, there was a period of time where there was nothing, there was no remote uh, uh, wireless internet connected animal feeder that was of any significance. And recently there's been a resurgence and it sounds like you're part of that resurgence. Well, I've been working on this for three years. So, you know, when I started looking, I, I couldn't find anything in the market. Mm -hmm. And then as, as time went on, it's just like, I thought, you know, I'm going to add this and I'm going to add that. And so it just became this, this thing that's got everything. Well, show us it. how it works. So, you know, that's the, the hopper. And dry food only, I would imagine. Right? Yeah, dry food only. Beef in there. And does Can it stay fresh it? with that? Is it sealed? Um, it's not sealed, but uh, you put it, it's good for about two weeks. Okay. You know? Lisa and puts fresh food out every morning for Ozzy and throws the food out that's been sitting overnight. But so you she's know what? A believer he in fresh actually food. prefers it because he eats his well, fresh food. Well, we're going to test it because Ozzy's here. But and then she just, gives you food out of a bag. Yeah, absolutely. me, I'm eating three week old food. Doesn't matter. <laughs> no, you're cooking so it. So the, the bottom, it's, it's just all stainless steel. Okay. Okay. You fabricated this yourself? Um, I fabricated this uh, at a production facility. Got it. Yeah. Hopefully Apple doesn't have a patent on the cylinder. <laughs> uh, I hope not. Why did you select the, stainless steel? Uh, because I wanted to make it high end. Okay. It's got everything on it. I, I wanted to make sure that it yeah. lasts a long time as well. Okay. And so the, the pet bowl also fits on like this, so it actually sits up above the, uh, the ground so the ants can't get into it. Uh, mm. So good, actually... Good. You can just cover the, the sides with a little bit of petroleum jelly, put it on. And I actually tested it on an ant hill for 24 hours. Oh, wow. Can we take this home? Because we're having an ant problem in our yeah, house. They, so, they get the food so, within so, 10 minutes. And, and the other thing is, you know, you don't want ants getting in your, your reservoir either. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a bridge across this as well. So you just put a little bit of petroleum jelly on. The ants won't cross it, and uh, they won't get into your reservoir. Well, we've already learned something. We've learned that petroleum jelly is not something that's ant friendly. <laughs> it's good to know. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's how it all goes together. And we've tested this. We have raccoons at our house, skunks. They can't get in. Um, no. Nope. They're pretty sharp. All right. Yeah, they they are sharp. They've uh, they actually they actually took the top off and got in <laughs> one time. And so that's why I had to change the design a little bit and make it so that we could so lock you, it up. So this is raccoon tested. It is, and I've got video proof of it. <laughs> so now you need opposable right. thumbs to get it, up, get it open. <laughs> so how does the Wi-Fi come in? Um, the Wi-Fi, actually, I wanted to show you. Um, Zaville, why don't you go uh, fill it up? Okay, so I will go fill up the other one. You have, a, we'll you have a lot go. of things on your network. So uh, we have a very congested Wi-Fi. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So we couldn't get everything to work in here. So in the guest room over there, and I think we've There's got no a camera in there as well. There's no Wi-Fi in there at all. <laughs> so what is we're going to do? Is Seville related to you? She's my wife. All right. So this is a, a, a husband-wife uh, team here. And have you started? To, have you put this up on a funding site yet? Yeah, it's on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you one thing about Kickstarter is you guys. Any, anybody that's going to go on Kickstarter should think about their marketing hear. long before so. they go on you've Kickstarter. You've got to get the awareness or you're not going to get through funding. That's one thing that I didn't Wait me didn't when I'm ready to. Much. I put a lot of time into the engineering, making sure that everything right. was done engineering-wise. But uh, but I think that's the smartest thing, is yep. to make sure the product's going to be successful and effective. And then yep. you well, should consider the marketing too, but you have to have a product first. Well, yeah, but... Uh, you know, you got to get eyeballs on your your Kickstarter, yep, and that, yep. I think that's one of the. Things you only that have I thirty do. days, right? I mean, well, well you, you have can, eyeballs you can go today. From Sixty to to zero. Okay. Or it's so you can go as 15. long as two months. Then. So you, yeah, yeah, you can go as long as. Is two months. Is yours still? How long will yours be open? Um, I've got about eighteen days left. All right, we're gonna see if we can. Excellent. How much have you raised so far? Um, about fifteen thousand, fourteen. Oh, that's good. And you're looking for. One hundred and fifty. So wow. Tenths of the difficult. way there. Mm. GoPetPal.com. Yeah. I'm going to buy two. All right. How much? I didn't ask that. Well, let's... Let's find I out think, how much. Yeah, let's uh, take a look at the... It's $360, but it's got, it's got Wi-Fi, it's got a speaker, it's got a mic. You can listen, okay. talk. Okay, Zavilla is, is putting in the food now. Yes. She's in our conference room where the Wi-Fi roams free, and the dogs as well. Ozzy, you see that? Go get it, Ozzy. Oh, Go he's thrilled. It. Go get it. Go... Is Ozzy in there? He doesn't watch TV. <laughs> go, go get it, Ozzy. He hears it. Yeah, I'm not going to say any more. How many? Oh, you have dogs, I take it. I uh, have, have a couple cats. Oh, this is for your cats. But dogs could love it, too. 
So you can see what uh, is going on in the camera in the other yeah. room. Here comes Ozzy. Oh, I think he's figured it out. Come, Ozzy. Hey, Bobby. Bobby. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> he says no. Oh. But we can, uh, where's the food? <laughs> Ozzy's the pickiest <laughs> dog <laughs> eater <laughs> photo. So you haven't done it yet. So you're going to do it now? What was that? How, how do you get it to uh, dispense? Oh, we're going to do that in just a second. Oh, okay. I was, I was thinking my wife needs the food. That's okay. It's not his food. So can She's somebody picky. take the... She's put food... Oh, there's more food? Well, we need to put some treats in there. Oh, you got... Oh! He's going to stack the deck. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> Where'd Lisa go? Did she lead Ozzy in? Is that out? Oh. All right. She's... Okay, yeah. Okay, we're going to go put some treats All right, so in I, I'd like to show you the setup. Um, sure. We, we made the setup so it could be very quick. Um, oh, you get a camera on the thing. Yeah, so awesome. you, you set up the time, 9 a.m., you want to put enough food. So that that's how you set it up. Can you guys see that? Yep, yep. All right, so now we're back on the... I didn't realize. So you could... Now, can you see this dog okay. cam or cat cam from anywhere on the Internet? So I'm going to make sure... Um, yes. So this is also a way of keeping up on your pet. Well, yeah, you can, and, and you can talk to your pet, too, so oh, I'm not... you can? Yeah, you can just press that button. Hello. So there's a camera in this? Yeah. Yes. There's Look. a camera in it. You can see your, your pet. Oh. Sorry, I stepped out to get Ozzy in the room. <laughs> you, it worked. He, he followed you there. Now he's, now he's kind of intrigued. So it has a camera. It has a speaker. Internet accessible. Wi-Fi. It basically has... The, all of the basic functions of all the best ones that I've seen, which is, you know, you have a, a, a way to automate the feeding, you have a camera, you have internet connection, you have sound interaction so you can call them and so on. Right. And see that they're Is it okay. waterproof and everything if it's outside? Um, you know, you, you don't want to put it out in the middle of the rain. Okay. But what you can do is, is I, I le left it outside for two years and I okay. didn't have a problem with it. That's good. If you go on a Kickstarter and look for Pet Pal Automatic Wi-Fi Pet Feeder, uh, you'll see that. But you can also go to their website. Zaville? Like. Yes. Can you just uh, press V? It's also great for talking to your okay. spouse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh. You gonna check it now? You gonna check it now? Now? This is, what am I supposed what? to do? Where, what? What? Uh, I don't so, understand. I, you know, the the wireless networks yeah, in here are are. A lot more complicated yes. than at a home. And I will stipulate that this is nothing like what you would have, uh, so, even if you were at a, a complex apartment complex. So there's there's a lot of things that you know uh -oh. it's difficult to get working uh -oh. in this yeah. environment. Yeah. But uh, you know I've I've used this at several people's houses and everything works great. But we're having just a little bit of problem with my feed me button. So you can set a timer. You can do the same can, time every day, several feedings or one. So you can you can set up five feedings, five a, feedings. A, a day. And then you also have a, a feed me button. So if you want to feed your pet when you want to feed your pet, it's, it's, it's not just so that you can go away and just have it automatically feed. What you can do is you can go out and then when you want to feed your pet, you can press talk and call your pet over. Come here, Ozzy, come here. And then he'll go over there. Oh no, Hello, he's coming Ozzie. to me. <laughs> Hello, Ozzy. But I get the idea. You can talk to the pet. The pet will run over to the speaker. And then and you then, can say, have and some then food. You can, and then you can feed. So is this an app that he's using? Yeah, this is an app. And we'll have an app for Android and for iPhone. iPhone app will, will uh, be ready soon. That's great. Okay. Okay. Now, I'll tell you, my only concern is the price. It's a pretty expensive That's product. That's my concern. Say again, how much? Six... It's a three hundred and sixty-five dollars. Three sixty-five on the the net right now. Is but that I think comparable it's about to what other people are charging? I mean, it's a, it's on the high end. There there are it's it's a, and it's a tough call. There are others like the Pinto Feed Pet Feeder. But they don't have the camera. They don't have the microphone. Uh, they some of them do, okay. um, but but they have tend to have lower capacities. Uh, sometimes they may not have some of the uh, durability and and pest um, features. So it's. It's, it's a tough call. It, I don't see this product uh, moving huge volumes. This isn't something for every home. This is more something for people who, you know, are willing to spend more to get more features. So, so we've put our straw poll up uh, at uh, 1670553. That's strawpoll.me slash 
0553 if you want to vote. Glenn, are votes coming in yet, or is it uh, too early? I just gave it out. So okay. So you can vote whether you would fund this or whether they should go fund themselves. And I do have some questions from the chat. People are asking at bit.ly slash IFT questions. Dave O'Dell wants to know, how is it powered? Yeah, how do you power this? Uh, it's powered off the, you just plug it in. Plug it in. And uh, one thing I'd like to say about the power is if the power goes off, it won't feed. But when the power comes on, it locks back up to your Wi-Fi, hooks back up, no problem. Right. Usually you have a problem with the, the Wi-Fi going down. Right. If the Wi-Fi goes down, it just continues on its automatic So the schedule is built in once you yes. program it. That's a good, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't yeah. want to leave it where not you feed too them reliable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi part, it can cut off and come back on, and you'll you notice that you can't get connected to it if the Wi-Fi goes down. Right. But uh, if the power goes down and comes back up, it'll just hook back up to your Wi-Fi and keep going. And your pet will survive. Bad yes, beef in the chat room points out that a drop cam alone is 150 bucks, so yeah. that would be half the cost right there. Any other questions, Glenn? Let's see. Looking at it, people want to know, uh, uh, Bud Pate is asking, have you tested this with a variety of cats? And then Jeff N., or Jeffrey Needles from Boston, is asking, are different designs coming, and will there perhaps be a smaller version for smaller pets? Well, that's one thing that my wife has talked about a lot. She'd like to see a smaller version. Um, the angles of everything have to be just right. So I, I'm, I'm thinking that I could make a, a smaller unit, but... Uh, um, what was the other question? It was if we tested with a variety of cats, yes, we did. Uh, we tested with our wild cats, which are not that human friendly. They are very right. careful, very like untrusty, but they like it a lot. So we t tested with cats, with dogs, with raccoons, opossums, name it. And uh, there were no issues with uh, animals. I saw Ozzy was a little bit scared in the, in the beginning. But well, she's just like scared between, between the strangers, so right. I kind of understand that. But if it would be in, the, in his um, environment, in his, in his house, I believe he would be okay with that. And we also, I also gave it to my neighbor for a little while. He tested it out, and he said when he got back home, his dog loved it so much, the dog, his dog wouldn't go back to his own bowl. They had to use my bowl <laughs> for a week before he'd go back to the other bowl. <laughs> But he likes the noise that it makes when it, it drops the food. Have, yeah. you, have you considered like eliminating the camera aspect so you could have a less expensive model, like offer it to be, they can talk to the cat or the dog? I've thought a lot about that. Because yeah. it just, it, this would maybe work well in like Beverly Hills or in some boutique shops. But if you had a couple of variations of versions or, you know, I think for this product, I think the pricing should be, no, you know, $299. I think that sounds a little more appealing to a lot of people. I know it's not going to trick our chat. Room, How much do you think it'll cost you to make a lot of production? people? Um, if if I can get it down to a hundred dollars in production, then I, I could probably sell it at three hundred dollars. You think you can do that? Um, there is a possibility. Yes. Cost of materials. Um, cost of materials is pretty high with with this particular version the way it is right now. The the cost of the stainless steel alone is probably going to be around, you know, seventy bucks, eighty bucks. Wow. But. Uh, I, Have you I considered could. other types of metals? I mean, it'd still be kind of high end, but... Well, right now I wanted to keep it high end. Okay. Just because, you know, stainless steel, you know... It looks nice. It looks nice. It, it'll last a long time. Right. But uh, I'm, I'm thinking I'd, I'd make it a little bit thinner. And, you know, the thinner you make it, the cheaper it gets. And, right. and uh, I probably could get it down into the $100 a unit to make. And so what are the options that you're offering people for crowdfunding if they give a certain amount of money, they get a unit, presumably? Are there other yes. options? What, what do you have? Well, I've got another, online I've got another set of bowls, so it, we can take two of these bowls and put them on a stainless steel. Um, um. It mounts on, mounts on the wall, mm -hmm. so if you have a tall dog, bigger dog, he doesn't have to bend all the way. And I know our friends have older dog and they love it. I mean, dogs love it. Yeah, dog loves so the, we have two of these bowls in the, the plate of metal on the wall and then you can set two of these on the on the wall so that was another um thing what that happens I, with water you could just have another s solution yeah there for was that. well there's so many water feeders right. out there and they're right. fairly in inexpensive right. the gravity fed water feeders are probably the best Pretty way to go yeah okay. right okay. all right i'd fund it all right. you that? <laughs> we got one <laughs> all right so. i like it i think even at that price uh, i think pet lovers uh you know going on a trip or whatever i think that even at that price that uh, that at 350 isn't that bad. I think that uh, be nice to see it. Uh, maybe a plastic version 
at a lower cost. But if you want to go high end, that's pretty nice. All right, Lisa. Um, I, I think the pricing needs to come down for me to say I'd fund that. I, I mean, I'd fund that for a high end pet store because I get, people spend millions of dollars on their pets every year. And if they travel millions. a lot, I can see them doing that. Billions, you're right. Um, for me, I think the price needs to come down a little bit to, to be a great stamp of approval. But I like the product. I like how it works. I like that you've been testing it for as long as you have. So I'd fund it, but I would highly recommend you consider your pricing point. All right. Thank you. Well, I'm going to disagree to a certain extent. Uh, I, I don't think it's a good idea to have a plastic model. I think that, that all of your competitors have plastic. Mm -hmm. That's right. And I think that, that your niche in the market would be the high-end, stainless steel, high-quality, and, and, and frankly, it looks way better than the other ones on the market that I've mm -hmm. seen. Those other Thank ones you. look, they, you know, they look like something you'd, you know, they look low-end, you know, and they have like these funky, sometimes they have these funky little LED uh, screens and so, and so on. Uh, so I, I think that going after the high end gives you a niche as opposed to, you know, slugging it out with the, with the rest of the competition out there. I also think that uh, I personally don't have a, a dog or a cat. We have wild cats, cats on our property and so on. We try not to feed them because um, <laughs> their job is to eat the uh, rodents. Uh, but, um, but pet owners, I've, I've noticed, are nuts about their pets and are willing to spend a lot of money. I mean, they, you know, uh, 350 bucks or whatever is nothing compared to the annual costs that people spend on all kinds of things, from veterinary care to, you know, you name it, sweaters for their dog or whatever. Pet owners spend a lot of money, and I think that, you know, this is something that's going to last for years. It's really, I don't think the cost, logically, is, it should be a, a problem at all. So I would fund that. Wow. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Three Thank funds. Thank but we got to check in with the straw poll. What do the people say? That's right. The people have spoken, and by a margin of uh, 8%, 56 to 44, the chat room says, I'd fund that. It was close, oh. but you got a universal, I'd fund that. And okay. Beatmaster does have a good question to that end. Can they guarantee the production in a timely manner when their project gets funded? Yes. I, I've been <laughs> over, I've been over like to China you um, have. several times. Wow, you know, you're taking I, this I'm, seriously. I'm in the business. I, uh, I'm an electrical engineer. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've been in sales on the, you know, working with engineers for the last 24 years. I've owned my own business. Mm -hmm. And so all of this is basically designed by myself. You know, I have mechanical engineers working with me. I have electrical engineers, mm -hmm. you know, with specialties working with me as well. But uh, we're almost ready to go. Wow. I haven't uh, let it out in, on the, the, the Internet yet, but, you know, I've been moving forward with all the engineering work. We've got the, uh, the top being redesigned so I can have access to all the proper things, and we're almost ready to go. Great. I would also include, like, you could have additional bowls if people want to buy a couple extra yes. with the units because, you know, some people, like me, like to make sure they're Fresh clean bowls and washed. Every day. Yeah. The, the other thing is, you know, it comes apart quick. You know, I, just, I showed you how to take it. I love great. how that's mounted. I love how that's really apart. nicely done, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And then the other thing is you can you can clean these things. You just throw them in the dishwasher. Throw right. the whole thing in the dishwasher. But, but for someone like out. me, I'd like to throw one in the dishwasher and put a new one on and, you know, oh, wait. And, and oh, they will come separately, definitely. Yeah, yes. I would I'm definitely have the option. You can buy five bowls with this yep. one unit. I mean, I'm going to have different sizes of yeah. bowls, too. That's awesome. I like that. Very nice, Kenneth. Yep. Zavila, well very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. A definite fund that. And just to just to uh, reiterate, you can go to bitly slash ifq uh, ift questions. Sorry, so that's bit dot ly mm -hmm. slash ift questions, and you'll find out how do you can fund that. This was uh, almost as good as the ostrich pillow. Right up there. No, this uh, kind of beats yeah. it. It really beats it. You're not going to do that to me, are you, Leo? No. He's can you give him that so he doesn't have to hear that? You know, I would like to show you one other thing. You know, I worked a long time to, sure. to make sure this, sure this this thing works perfectly. But what I want to show you is, it's like, take the take the lid off and put it back on. See how you... Smart. I just, you know, it really is well made. I have to say yeah. that. You really get it's the so sense. easy to get. It's just solid. It, it well, that's why I told them if you make I, an exceptional product, you'll find the right the way to market here? it. Well, so. yeah, at night you'll be able to night vision as well. That's awesome. That's so pretty. The, that's the speaker, the mic, the, the the night vision, and also I I had to do this coupler, you know, custom so that I could actually just drop it on. Right. Did you think Kenneth, Kenneth was nuts when he suggested this? No, 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 no. no. I'm all, all in all to in. support. All right, gopetpal is their website.com.
And uh, wow, that was fun. That's Thank fun. you. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Right. Very good. Very nice. I appreciate the, the chance. Well done. All right, well, our next project is the Atomizer, the case that sprays. What do you have for us today? Hi, friends. My name is Rahul, the CEO and founder of Atomizer. Hi, I'm Priya, head marketing for Atomizer. And we have a quick little presentation that we'd like to walk you guys through, and hopefully that helps answer some of the initial questions, uh, and then we'll take it from there. Great. Okay. All righty. So our smartphone these days are the important part of our life. So why not allow them to keep us germ-free, safe, and fresh? Right, and um, so here we have for you Atomizer. It's the case that sprays. Uh, we have technical difficulties there, but we can go through it. But we were supposed to get the slide on, but okay. it's the case that sprays. And you heard it right, it sprays. It sprays. Okay, so uh, when you're running late for your presentation and you forget to you know, put on your cologne or something and it's very important to impress, you have Atomizer. He's a kid who loves getting his hands dirty, you're out in the park, you don't know sort of how to deal with that, you know, you wish you had something to wash his hands, you can atomize it. While you want to pick up the dog poop and don't know where to clean your hands, you have atomizer. Or you, See have, that, or you have that situation which you just don't want to deal with, which is that what? The dirty bars. The dirty bars. Or if you want to travel light, but you still want to carry your either fragrance or hand sanitizer with you in the flight, you can atomize it. Uh, Americans are spending today close to $4.2 billion every year on buying their favorite fragrance or um, hand sanitizer, you know, to stay, stay fresh, uh, smell fresh, and be germ-free. And companies are spending billions and billions of dollars to make those products as handy as possible. But let's face it, they're not that handy because, you know, they come in little tubes. You either forget them. I know I've lost a whole bunch of them. Or this, it's still another thing you need to remember to carry. But a smartphone, your smartphone, you tend, you take it's, it with you in the bathroom. It's not something you leave behind. So, um, so designed to fit, you know, airline approved liquid quantities. Atomizer is a truly handy way to carry your favorite fragrance, hand sanitizer, and in the near future, pepper spray, breath mints, asthma pumps, and much more. Hmm. Um, so the atomizer, the we, when we designed it, we took two big things into consideration, both style and functionality. So it's uh, our cartridge is ultrasonically welded, so it's leak proof, and it's easily refillable with your favorite fragrance or hand sanitizer. So just to give you guys a quick demo, and I'll walk through this for the people that are listening Great. in, is, you know, um, I'm gonna play this real quick. You take your favorite fragrance or hand sanitizer. It's a really easy filling mechanism. So you fill that in. Once it's filled, you take it, you put it into this encasing, in the case, you pop on the back plate and you're all ready to go. Um, so that's really how simple it is. The other thing is, you know, we all butt dial. We know that happens. And so if you were to accidentally butt spray, uh, <laughs> we've got that covered with, it's a very simple, very easy locking, locking mechanism. Uh, effective so that there's no accidental and blocking. you've also coined the word butt spray and yes. we've coined the word butt spray <laughs> oh my gosh oh, good. Okay. making history yep um and the most important use case of atomizer and uh, i think the uh, inspiration for why uh we created this i hope sound plays <laughs> That's okay. um, I think I heard something. <laughs> yeah, blame it on the dog. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Okay. So we are done with our designs and are ready for production. Mm -hmm. two, we are asking for twenty thousand dollars on Indiegogo, and uh, that would fund our molds and first round of production. Can. Can we play with it? Here, yes. Is, is there, Wait, yeah, it's, is there pepper spray in there now? Or? No, it's well, water mixed with uh, perfume right now because it's a, it's a 3D no, no, printed case. I don't like perfumes. <laughs> they both went. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can. You All can. right, you spray me. What? You I, well, how did I end up in the middle of this? <laughs> <laughs> did you guys get a picture of that? Um. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know oh, that. I didn't know my the, God. I didn't know the distance. All right, so. You smell, um, you smell you lovely. You smell. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> yeah, I like perfume. Sorry, is, I just don't have this perfume. This is an iPhone, then. but will you have cases for anything but an iPhone? Or so uh, initially, we have designed for iPhone 5 and 5s because Ooh. that's uh, no, right now the no, current market. No, don't spray market. anymore. But let me. I want to smell it. Well, I have a Whoa! 
Tony, come here. I think you got Tony. Don't. <laughs> It's got it's an uh, expensive camera. It's, if you butt sprayed, it would really go. Okay, so it really <laughs> well, doesn't. It really... doesn't matter what's in there. It could be anything. But... Well, I wanted to see if it held the smell, and it, it the whole case you can smell the perfume. Yeah, whatever you put so, in here, uh, smell like that. Right now, it would because this is a 3D printed plastic, so okay. it's not a plastic. This is a technically. prototype. It's, it's a, a prototype. It's a prototype. Oh, okay. So, so I'm like, I wouldn't material. want that. But to you smell. want to seal in the uh, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, Everything right. will Wait, be sealed. Let me see how heavy it is. Awesome. Will it be bulky. roughly that size and, and weight? And lighter than that. Lighter because, than that. Uh, okay. is, Lighter, is, it gonna is it also a protective case? Is it going to protect the phone? Or, I mean, because to I, me... i got to tell you, problem number one. The TSA is never going to let you go yeah. through on this. Actually, How do you get through surprised. on that? Uh, we have gotten through uh, tested two it. international but, but, flights. But I understand it's TSA approved volume, but, it, but they can't see what's in here. They know that there's six or three ounces of something. Yeah, so uh, basically... Do you take it out? If you want to, if you want to carry different cartridges, like hand sanitizer, perfume, and all, so we sell cartridges uh, that's trying And it would have to be labeled uh, because they want to see three ounces and they want to see what it is. It's, uh, so it's technically, we'll be having a etching on every cartridge. Okay. That it's how, uh, how much it is. It's probably five ml right now. That's yeah. way less than... I, I gotta say, I don't see this as being anything anybody in the U.S. would use. Maybe you, do you, you think there's an international market for this? Obvious. You might know the market better than I do internationally. But in the U.S., I don't see this as a... Well, I mean, and currently there's pepper spray cases yeah. that are available. <laughs> this you is know terrible. that for your iPhone. Don't carry pepper spray in your phone. Well, but people do. I mean, well, the they, thing, the they thing have is the, these now. The, the, here's the thing about smartphones. Smartphones, whatever's attached to or installed on your smartphone, is something you're always going to have with you, no matter what. Right. So that, that's really the reason you would put pepper spray in your phone, because you never can forget your pepper spray. Pepper right, spray. right. So... I understand that. Oh, I understand. And Those they're mostly for girls. I mean, they're pink mm -hmm. and purple. Yeah. I, so. I got to say, go fund yourself. That is, I, <laughs> you guys are nice guys. I understand you. This, I just don't see this This as being a product at all. I uh, wanted to be the first to say that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, I, but so, so what do you think, Liz? Uh, just generally. So what do you think, Liz? For me, um, I, I want a protective case. I want something that's an extra battery backup. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, if I have my kid at the park, I'm not going to have just hand sanitizer in my phone. I'm going to have a diaper have bag, a like every, everything yeah. else. So, and yeah, I I wouldn't fund this. This wouldn't be something I would want. You know, um, I'm not that girly though, right. so I couldn't really speak for other women. Yeah. But for me, it's not something I would I would want to carry with me. It's not over yet though, because. Mike. I, That's right. <laughs> you can save well, this. Uh, I could. I could. Uh, well, wait, wait. And I have a question. What yes. is your pricing on this product? So uh, it retails for $35, uh, but currently it's for $20 on Indiegogo. Okay. Yeah. How much have you raised on Indiegogo so far? Uh, we have raised around 8% of our goal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so here's the thing. I, for germaphobes, I think this is a great product because they're committed enough to killing germs yeah. that they're willing to have that be their selection among all the many things mm -hmm. that you can put as a case on your phone. I mean, that, that's really the, the problem with this is that you're not competing against uh, other people who have spray functionality on their phone. You're competing right. against every type of case there is from, you okay. know, from, from, the, from the, 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 the yellow jacket case, which Stand gives you 650,000 volts uh, yeah. to, your, to the victim's neck. Uh, to you know, which is a compelling product. Uh, I'd fund that. <laughs> uh, but in, and this again, you you could, as you said, put pepper, pepper spray in spray. it. But then you're competing against the other pepper spray yes. uh, companies. So I'm going to say, go fund yourself. And I'm sorry to say that because I think it's a great product for a insig a very niche. insufficiently you know, large. You know where I could audience. see this though, SkyMall. I could yes. too. Yeah. Can you yeah. see this but on he's Sky right. Mall? The only person I thought I could see this for is the hypochondriac yeah. that washes her hands 50 times. Yeah. But no, no, don't laugh. People exist. I'm yeah. a little OCD on other things, but not with that. So I really honestly can see that for that person. The, but you're right, to, Sky Mall. And yeah. to answer your earlier question, we do ha we did have people from UAE where there's a very high market for, for using colognes, perfumes yeah. and mm -hmm. colognes. Yep. Yes. They're very interested in this. So that's, yes. That's, yeah, see, that's, that's so. the market. There may be a market outside of the US. I would, that's what I was thinking exactly. too. I, yes, I, think, yeah. I think I speak on behalf of the panel when I say that you very well could succeed with this. We're not predicting failure. We are saying that we wouldn't fund it. Um, the other problem that I see with it mm -hmm. is that Real estate, in terms of thickness, for especially an iPhone, where Apple 
you know, they spend a billion dollars to, to, to get a millimeter off, right. off mm -hmm. the size of it. It seems like you're wasting a lot of space. The, the, the canister inside takes up a certain amount of space, and then everything below that is air, where you're adding, a, what, a half an inch or more to the thickness of a phone for no functionality, yeah. uh, although it gives you a roundness to a certain degree. That's bigger than the Mophie case, too. Dribbling on the phone. It just butt spread. Wait. Glenn, what are, what are they saying out there? Well, Hisham from Dubai wants to know, does it affect the camera? It you seems see? like the cover is very thick around the camera lens. No. It, so uh, currently, uh, we had that camera issues earlier on early prototypes, so we have designed a new one, mm -hmm. which, which doesn't affect the camera as much. Because... Uh, the yeah. thing is there are thick cases in the market and we are like right in middle not that thick and not that thin mm -hmm. uh, but only for like multifunctional usage so i would go for thinner over we lighter are we are that would be the for that. that's because a lot of people want to slide that in their pocket and the yeah. price i think the it's it's too high in my eyes mm -hmm. you know with all, i'm just looking at what's out in the market mm -hmm. so i would try to keep it around 20 and it would be for i think you'd be much more likely selling this if it were an impulse purchase. Yeah. Yes. It, if you didn't have but to, you know. targeted for people that want, you know, to be germophobes. super clean. Mm -hmm. Impulsive germaphobes. But also people that wear perfume is pretty Who prevalent. like to smell yeah. good. Because right. I know a lot of girls that would buy that if they're into the perfume. Yeah, so. and, and yet another uh, piece of advice that I would give you is that you seem to, again, as I said, have a lot of space inside. Yeah. And it would make it much more complex. But if you could have multiple liquids, two at least... <laughs> Where somebody could have, they, they could take care of the germaphobe and the, 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 the you know. The and the, the, don't and spray the wrong that. one, though. Don't spray the wrong I one. I know. Uh, it yeah, but I would kind of worry about know. the scent going up the thing. I mean, you can't switch it. So what the one thing we've done with this is it has a AB plastic cover before that sits before the cartridge sits mm -hmm. on to top of it, it which is so so any okay. issues about it seeping out is taken okay. care of in okay. that case. That's in that one case of the reasons it kind of adds that little thickness. Uh -huh. What we are working on is a slimmer cartridge because our cartridge is a little wide right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think once the cartridge slims down, what that does is takes away quantity for liquid, which we think we're fine with at this point, uh, which will then slim down. And then to answer the person from Dubai was, no, it doesn't affect the camera because it sprays up. So we saw the spray is pretty projectile. Mm -hmm. um, and we're working on, on a mechanism where the spray won't leak in because that's one issue. <laughs> and of course, if, sorry, if you put, if you put you lens cleaning fluid in there, you can spray it in the air and then sort of go <laughs> like this and then... And that's just an idea. But yeah, this cover, uh, the one of the reasons why you're saying that there's empty space is we are giving options to people, uh, not right now, but mm -hmm. we'll be giving options to whether to buy 5 ml or 10 ml cartridge. So depending I upon see. your usage. Uh, also, the back plate is uh, replaceable. So you can buy different colors. But at the same time, we are exploring you know, different ideas for women, especially having their makeup kits inside the case. Mm -hmm. So it's like a one piece thing to carry everywhere. So. It's more like a functional thing, yeah. uh, looking for mainly women as a market. Well, it seems like a v very well-designed product, and it's, it's, it sounds like a good idea. I got a selfie spray. It's right in my mouth. I don't see, see how effective it is. I'm sorry. I didn't know it would shoot that far. I figured it would be this light. And, and, I'm, and I'm impressed by the price. I think your biggest problem is the world of smartphone cases yes. is a brutal one. Yes. Yeah. And that's your biggest problem. There. That's true. Well, and for what the need is, too. Yeah. I, I think it's. Do we have uh, straw poll votes? Because What you, is the straw poll? Maybe, they can, maybe the real world can so, counter our. Uh, I don't negative, think they can. Uh, I think sadly, it's three. Sadly, by 88% uh, to 12%, the Ooh. chat room is telling you to go fund yourself. Oh. Well, for the 12%, go on Indiegogo. <laughs> there you go. No, that's, that's, that's smart. That's, that's a good marketing campaign manager there. <laughs> Indiegogo. Dot com slash y slash atomize. Yeah, in the world of crowdfunding, there's no such thing as bad publicity. No, so. there's yeah. not. There you go. Good so. luck to you, too. Well, thank, well, thank you well, thank so much. You. Thank you for yeah. having us. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you for coming. An interesting idea. Yes, it is. Well, our next project is the Nomad CNC Mill. Take it away, gentlemen. All right. Uh, my name is George. I'm Apollo. And uh, we are two of the creators of the Nomad, our third partners in LA. Hello, Robert. I'm sure he's watching us with beta breath. Uh, the Nomad 83 is a... Uh, desktop CNC milling machine. So we're, uh, what we try to do here is combine the flexibility of a milling machine, a big industrial major milling machine, with the uh, ease of use and out-of-the-box experience of a 3D printer. We've been in product development for 16, 17 years, so we're really familiar with rapid prototyping tools. Uh, we own a bunch of them. Uh, so we saw an opportunity to make what we thought was uh, a, an easy-to-use machine so that anyone can use it whether you have any machining experience or not. 
uh, it's ready to run out of the box. Uh, it comes with all the software, which uh, usually CNC machines don't come with any software. You buy a machine and that's all you get. Uh, it comes with cutters, it comes with materials, so you can get started right away. Uh, I think one of the key features that we bring to the table, uh, the software makes it really easy to begin making parts quickly. We do a lot of the number crunching on, uh, under the hood. All you do is uh, you bring in your 2D or 3D part into our software. Uh, you tell it, I want to cut it out of wood. You select a, a type of cutter. You say, I want it to machine quickly or I want a lot of detail. And the software takes care of the rest. So we put a lot of thought into removing some of the guesswork that goes into CNC machining. So let me stop you there. Yeah. What software? Where does this software come so from? So the software that we're shipping with this is MeshCam. It's a proven CAM software that's been developed for 10 years. People have used it to make jewelry molds to aerospace parts. The second piece of software is Car by Motion. That's our machine controller. So after MeshCam generates the toolpath or plans the motion of the cutter, then Car by Motion feeds that information into the machine so it can cut it. What kind of materials? Uh, that's a great question. Thank you, Leo. Uh, you can do PCBs. For one, you can do hardwoods, uh, soft metals like aluminum and brass. Okay. That's actually both. Uh, plastics oh, like acrylics, ABS. A model of a it, is, it, is it like a Dremel head? I mean, what is the milling head like? So a lot of the machines uh, that are kind of the DIY type come with a Dremel head. Mm -hmm. uh, we developed our own spindle. So from the ground up, it's our own design. has a brushless motor that is uh, quiet. We have a... a our own speed controller so that the RPM stays constant throughout the operation. So if, you, uh, if you're machining aluminum, sometimes you might get a little load. The machine knows to increase the power, so you get a clean part. So that's, that's also our own design. This is kind of the opposite of a 3D printer because instead of building it's up, exactly you're cutting the down. Opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This is really cool. It's pretty incredible. I, I think this is a, this is a really interesting Here's another idea. great one that we just made for a project. It's no. an iPhone dock made with a walnut and oh, aluminum. Look at that. So did, did you mill the walnut as well yeah. as the metal? Yes. With the same head, or do you have different heads for different materials? Uh, different different bits. Different right. bits. Yeah. Great. Okay. You'd have to. Yeah, you want a wood bit for wood or a yeah. plastic right. one for plastic. But it, but so you're planning to sell it with all the bits? How? What, what, what would we get, and how much would it cost? Yeah, so you get the machine. You get uh, an assortment of bits, still to be determined, but yeah. a, a nice amount. And you get starter material. Probably some wood, probably uh, something we call ren shape, yeah. which is a composite. It's really easy to machine. Uh, and of course, it comes with the software. Now you mentioned uh, the bits, or you know, how the Dremel head. One thing we added to that's this. A oh yeah, that's a this wrench. This is phenomenal. It's a uh, circuit board. Oh. So this is the kind of PBS, PB, whatever they call it, plastic that you would use in a 3D printer, but just cut down. Well, or? That, that's AB, ABS. It's, it's ABS. Plastic. I mean, this yeah, is yeah. this is wrench shape. It's a it's a type of really it's dense wren? wren shape. Wren shape. It's a really fast machining foam. So if you want to make a quick prototype, ah. this is. This is perfect. That's what this gear is made out of, I yeah. think. Yeah. Probably. And yeah. I'm going to cut your uh, logo. Uh, oh, that's awesome. On yeah. the machine. You didn't tell oh. us how much. So it's on Kickstarter now for under 2000 When we're out of Kickstarter, it will be between 2200 or t to 2500 That's about what a replicator uh, yeah, yeah, costs, it's, it's a maker a, bot. Yeah. It's in line with a desktop 3D printer price. Yeah. yeah. This is really phenomenal. I can't believe you could. This is brass? Yeah. Yeah, that's brass. You can actually cut brass with yeah. this? Mm -hmm. How long would it take to do something like that? Uh, that one one's uh, an hour and a half. That is incredible. And this is from a 3D design on your mesh program? Uh, it's actually a 3D file um, from online. So okay. a skull. And okay. uh, I uh, shrank it down for that little brass part, and I... Uh, sized it up for the larger one. Now, you mentioned that it, uh, the amount of time yeah, that, that it takes. Is this a set it and forget it, so you wander away and go watch a show, or do you have to be sitting there operating uh, the machine? You can put the lid down, walk away. Okay. Yeah. If you have operations like uh, multiple tools, like if you want a, a thicker tool for a quick rough passing, and then you have another tool for a finer detail, yeah, you have to be there. Okay, so here's the big question. How does your product differ from the other mill, which is a competitive product that's also has already been crowdfunded? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's Bigger, bigger build envelope, uh, eight inches by eight inches by three inches high, uh, 83 in the name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it comes with a software that runs in Mac and Windows for our version. Is that different from the other mill? Yeah, I think they only run Mac, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Okay. Uh, and we can also mill PCBs. Uh, and this is amazing. You can make your own breadboards. Yeah, th so this, uh, that couple is really cool. So you can mill more with yeah. your product. And uh, in order to do that, we had to build a uh, full aluminum frame. So yeah. uh, 
It Underneath looks really the, rigid. It's, it's, looks really it's bamboo. Yeah, it's 50 pounds of aluminum. Aluminum wow. frame. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that would make sense. Wow. It keeps it rigid. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have other usability features. You know, we want to make this an experience that is hassle-free for the user. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to make it as, as plug and play as possible. So we have a, a tool length setting. For instance, I mentioned changing bids. So you put in your tool, uh, you, you move the head to where you want to cut, you click go, and the machine knows the distance it has to travel to start cutting. And does this come with standard bits, or can people like buy replacement? They can buy replacement. Bits or, it comes with it. You can buy you. them on Amazon, McMaster, right. online. Okay. Yeah, we're not gonna lock Just anybody into proprietary bits. That's that's awesome. Yeah. This the way is to go. incredible. Let, Thank let me, you. Can you turn? It yeah, on? yeah. He's Let's, gonna yeah. do a quick, Let's quick see demo. An that's amazing. Okay. Yeah. I want them to make me something small like that and pretty. How right. accurate uh, is it? What is uh, that? Repeatable. It's uh, it's yeah. That's a it's a it's a question that we get asked a lot. Because yeah. There's a lot of uh, a lot of that goes into accuracy, right? But right. in the x and y direction, we can do one thousandth of an inch. Wow. In the c direction, point oh 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 one of an inch. So wow. it's that's it's very good. That is wow. that is thinner than the thi the width uh, the width of a human hair. Yeah, that's excellent. Yeah. yeah. Look at that go. So is that unusual? I, I'm, I've never used a, a mill, uh, anything like this at all. But is it unusual for the bottom to, to, to do one access and the top to do the no, other? No, there's, there's, uh, yeah, this is a moving table. Uh -huh. There's something called a moving gantry. So mm -hmm. the cutter moves this way. Uh, is that standard for mills of different sizes, or? Yeah, uh, we had to do a, a moving table because we wanted to be enclosed. Mm -hmm. To do a moving gantry, we couldn't put the sides on it. You know, what we so we wanted to, to be. Well, let's get Glenn to set up the, the polling. Yes, I, I want to make Glenn. sure that Glenn has uh, yeah. everybody. We, so can we see wanted it to be, you know, if you have a spare bedroom, you can use it. A, right. a, a home office, a studio, a garage, this a shop. Is, so we great. wanted to make I'd it enclosed. I would love to just have this in my living yeah. room. <laughs> George, hold on just a second, because we want to get make sure that the people at home can vote on this. As well. So if you want to vote on whether you would fund this or not, go to strawpoll.me slash 167-0560 to vote. And, of course, you can ask questions at bit.ly slash IFT questions. We do have uh, one from the chat room already. Magpie wants to know, does the CNC mill support any open source software and Mastercam as well? Yeah, we have it, to use it, your software? No, or? it'll take any G-code from any CAM software. If you, if you like Mastercam, yeah, export G-code and we'll read it. Okay. Yeah, it comes with software because we want to make it easy for the user. Right. But right. If, you, right. if you have your own, yeah, go ahead. No, I'd like, I'd like the whole package. Yeah. I like the idea of it showing so, up. This is another point of difference with us. Uh, we made this, we call the flip jig. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make a 3D part, let's say we want to machine the other side of that skull. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You put the material in, in here. This fits into the table. Oh, yeah. You cut, cut the top, and then you flip it. The software will know and tell you. And then you machine the bottom, which makes it really simple to do 3D parts. Usually you have to do alignment and res right. reset the machine. This takes all the hassle out. Did you did you use a prototype of this machine to make another prototype of this machine? <laughs> we wish, no. And could you automate that? So can it be self-replicating? Almost. Does that come in at various sizes, or is that the yeah, only? The yeah, one? this is this is the first size. We're okay. gonna we're talking about making a smaller one for you know jewelry applications. That's well, yeah. Action yeah. That's why I'm asking. Lisa would be interested in that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm interested in that. Part. I mean, but look at this. It's because beautiful. that's beautiful. I love that. That is that's just incredible. spectacular. Smart. Thank you. Um, it's nice to see the variation. You know, I'd be the first to say I don't know anything about CNC milling. I think uh, I'm one though. But Wouldn't this, this be fun to really do at home? looks phenomenal. Yeah. I've done it? a little. I've worked around a woodworking shop, so yeah. This is this is pretty. Incredible. Uh, I love this the idea that you even just if just to make your own breadboards. If you were designing electronics, the ability to to, to grind that. these out. Would yeah, be that's just, an Arduino board, actually. Is it? Yeah. Wow, that's really great. And you found that design for that online? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just. Grab it, test it, make sure it works. So great. I just Such want because idea. it looks like it'll be fun. Uh, <laughs> I, I have to say that, you know, a big part of what you're doing here that's, I mean, milling has existed for a while, so you haven't yeah. invented the mill. No. But right. the design and construction of it, I, lo I, I love it, frankly. Mm -hmm. Because it looks it looks like a no BS design. It looks yeah. like a really highly functional, it looks very sturdy. I don't know if it's actually sturdy, actually well constructed, it, it but it looks solid, that way. It doesn't it? And I'm impressed by the fact that Closing that lid, you can still see it, but it's, it's yeah. very good with the with the silencing it. I mean, the difference between it, it being was not and noisy, was it? No, yeah. no, it wasn't. Yeah. So that we were able to hear you well. and converse with you while yeah. it's running. Yeah, we yeah. we wanted to be, you know, uh, to appeal to a to a number of people. Yeah, not not just a hobbyist or a maker, but if you want, if you have a small business, you could use this. If you if you just if you're a jeweler, you could use it. So would I have to buy the uh, materials from you, or are these fairly no, standard? No, no, we'll, we'll, standard we'll, materials. We'll ship yeah. it with material. We, yeah. We'll probably sell material, but you right. can use your own. 
I think this if is a really home, interesting angle on the 3D printer space. Mm -hmm. This there idea is. of being able to... So there's your the logo. Look at that. That came out great. Three minutes. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's Way to butter up the judges. That'll do it. How That's hard... In, how, but it's also... They did it right in front of us. It's not yeah. like their, their product No, works. I want to see it working. Yeah. Well, I think one key here is that we took an image file from the internet. That's your logo. We just downloaded right. it. Right. And okay. The right. software brought in that PNG file. It created a height map and then said, okay, I know how deep I have to cut, and we just went ahead and did it. So you said 17 years you've been working on this? Oh, 16 no. years of product 16 development. 16 years of product development. Of product development. Yeah. So a variety of different products. Yeah. yeah. Got it. But did you have a background in CNC milling? Uh, our partner does. Yeah. 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 Who wrote the... Uh, and the, the name the of the software. printer is three, this Carbide 3D. That's our company. Uh, your company. What's the printer's name? Uh, Nomad 883. I like the name Nomad 883. Exactly. In any environment. Exactly. And I love it. Where are you? Uh, <laughs> like where you are you? already said. Yes, at home in any environment. I <laughs> That's like That's incredible. It. Where are that. you uh, crowdsourcing the, uh, the funding? Kickstarter. This and, is a Kickstarter project. And you've already blown you away your about, goals. Oh, they have. They yes. have. Yes. Oh, you just. But it makes now you're, sense because I'd fund that. Now you're that. going for the stretch. <laughs> right. I would totally. I would fund this. All right, I'll vote. Uh, I'd fund that. Absolutely. This is incredible. Well, Even I want at $2, one. Can we, can we buy one? But, I, you know, one thing that happened with the MakerBot was it started at around 2000 and then they were able to get the replicator down. And, and I think that, it, you know, this is a very reasonable price for a first. Yeah. But product. I like this because the, it, it, you can use any type of material, which to me... I love it. It has mm -hmm. more functionality for me. I'm not really into plastic, but, yeah. you know, you kind of pulled out the right things the here. We brass. have wood and the brass. Yeah, it's, look at that. It's... The aluminum. I just want to try it for to make okay. some jewelry. Yeah. They made their own. Uh... You know, you asked about accuracy, right? We designed it to be an inch wide, and it came out an inch wide, right. not right. 0.9999 right. or 1.1. It was 1.0001 oh, 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 of an inch. Wow. Right. Um, I'm wondering if it can be retrofitted to do home dentistry, but probably not. You probably don't want to put your <laughs> oh, head in there. Oh wow! Yeah, um, we, if we take the back out, you could probably put your head in there. Yeah. Okay. No, right. that would. Scary. We need a volunteer, somebody, if you so can please. Uh, I, I do have one question. What if it needs to be worked on or repaired or or serviced? Well, we offer a warranty with it. Okay. So if anything happens, we'll be happy to look at it. Okay. Uh, Tell me about this, because it looks like two different materials. Did you mill the C and then put it into the aluminum? Yeah. So that tells you a little bit about the tolerances. I mean, that's a perfect fit. And it's actually a little bit loose. Is we, it? We could have been a little tighter on it. Really? I mean, it's yeah. it's... It, it feels like inlay. I mean, it really is beautifully done. So, are you funding that? Oh, I'd fund this. Okay. I, I, I want it for me. Yeah, I, mean, I want to buy one right now. Yeah. Before we go to Glenn, yeah. I'd fund oh, that. Oh, we didn't ask. Uh, but I would fund it. <laughs> you got oh. three pr yeah. yes votes. Well, yeah. we don't need the audience at this point. Well, but we, <laughs> we don't need the audience. Oh, Lisa, yes, we do. Yes, we Chat do, room actually. would fund that hard. Yeah. How, 89%. Well, all right. Wow. 89% would fund wow. that. And uh, there are some questions, though. Andrew, Fake, and Derek all have questions about the largest maximum production size, largest material you can use. Yeah, so the uh, the production size of the machine uh, will stay this size, which is about right now 19 inches by 20 by 20. Okay. The build envelope is 8, inch, eight inches by 8 inches on the XY and 3 inches high. Okay. So that's, that's the maximum size for this machine. Now, I'm realizing as we're doing this show, this is our first show, mm -hmm. that this is a great show for anybody who's doing crowdfunding project uh, funding, right? So this is a product that people can use to make to other make more Kickstarter products. projects. I agree. And the advice that I've heard from, from, the, from the three groups we've had, all of them have good made. advice for people, yeah. and there's much to be learned from people. So that's another part of yeah. the audience we haven't really talked about, which is the crowdfunding community themselves who can learn a lot from this, can learn a lot from you guys. And this reminds me of the, of the pet feeder we heard uh, earlier, which is a really nice, high-end, uh, no-nonsense design, which I think is a great, uh, a great and sorely needed thing, and it's something that the, the ordinary, commercially funded companies tend to not do. So, congratulations to Thank you, you. Uh, for already f reaching your goal, and and it uh, just looks like a fantastic product. I, I frankly think this is more exciting than the 3D printer. I, it, it has many of the same functionality, but there, I don't know. There's something to me about carving this out instead of building it up. Um, and and the materials you're using are so much more interesting than the limited materials of the inexpensive 3D printers. You're using actual metals here. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, that's what I, I like. I think too. this is really, to me, it's almost more, more exciting than a 3D printer. Right. Yeah, it's uh, certainly more usable, useful. Home CNC milling. Yeah. What an idea! I you got great. a hit. Thank Congratulations! Wow. Congratulations. How much have you raised so far? Uh, Two hundred seventy thousand. Wow. So you're gonna do it. 
Oh, this oh, is yeah. happening. Yeah. yeah, that's very exciting. Right. Congratulations. Thank really you. well done. They're going to do it. All right. Well, maybe, they should do it. I mean, maybe wow. in two years, Mark Zuckerberg will pay you $10 billion. No, there's 19 yeah, right? days left. So if you want to get on the Nomad CMC bandwagon, mm -hmm. you can go to Kickstarter.com, Nomad CNC three, uh, from Carbide 3D. And I, there are still, um, you can still buy models. And, uh, yeah, yeah. and, and I, do you have stretch goals? Yeah. We have a stretch goal, yeah. We uh, only include this uh, flip jig for, yeah. the, for the higher tier. Yeah. If we hit uh, 275, everybody gets it. I think you're oh, going all great. the way. Yeah. Uh, and that is, by the way, an invention all by itself. That's, yeah. that's really so cool. So I do have a question. Are you thinking of um, scaling this, making this a little bigger? Yeah. I'm sure you are, yeah. right? Yeah. This is like the first, yeah. the first model? Okay. Yeah, we, we have uh, on the drawing board uh, a number of models great. to follow up. So you're going to go smaller or just S smaller, bigger? Okay. Your, your price point is about as high as you can go without actually starting to get to the price points yeah. of real CNC milling yeah, machines. Right. Okay. So, yeah, you you don't want to get you, you don't want to get into the big business of CNC, right? No, you no we want to be CNC. desktop. Yeah, yeah. desktop yeah. CNC. Yeah, but I can see somebody wanting twice the size of that at home. Sure. I Absolutely. think Lisa is one of them. Well, I'm kind of like the option. I think we're going to have a, a whole CNC milling operation going on. In I the, think it'll be fun. I love though, it. Look at that. We're constantly looking for, Look at that. you know, we, we just bought a house. And we're constantly looking for little things. And I'm just like, why can't I just make something? Instead of spending a hundred bucks for knobs on my desk, you we could have milled them. them for a few thousand. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would be to buy it, and then you make a bunch of other things. Yeah, it wouldn't no, just be for I, that I think one this thing. Is really, but I, I just this think, is so exciting. I think I it's also educational, and you yeah. can you yep. can do yeah. other things with it, Very too. Nice. I really like it. So uh, I think a, a, a round of uh, fund this, we'd fund it from the panel and from the home audience as well. That's that's pretty good. You don't get better than that. No. Yeah. Right. Thank you, everybody. That's great. Right. Thank product, you. I think the product of the day so far. Nice to meet you. George and Apollo, well done. And our next product is the Duino Cube, a retro game console you can hack. It sounds intriguing. What is your name and what is the Duino Cube? My name is Simon Q, and Duino Cube is a game console that's based on the ones from the 20th century. So, ha, 20th century. 20th century. <laughs> oh my God. Super NES, like, Sega uh, Genesis, and yes, I grew up playing those. Sega. And yeah, and Game Boy, Game Boy Color, the whole lineup. But it's built with modern technology. It's got an FPGA to do the graphics. It's got um, a USB system. It's got an SD card, and it's based on Arduino. You designed this yourself? Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. In fact, this was originally my senior project from college. Oh, only what college? Caltech. Caltech. All right. Caltech now, nice. we're, now we're talking. Uh, so a couple of questions about the Duino Cube. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you get the ROMs? Because aren't these copyrighted ROMs? No, this is not meant to be a system where you can just take old ROMs from other systems. Right. You just write new ones. So th this is really targeting. Is there, can I go buy a ROM? Where would I? I don't. Oh, I see. So somebody's going to develop for it. Yeah. Ah. So this is for hobbyist developers. So I'm not playing Sonic the Hedgehog. Right. I'm playing some other game. Or you can make Sonic the Hedgehog. You can ah. make a Sonic the Hedgehog Duino Cube port, you see. I see. Mm. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the hardware. Do you have hardware sprite support, things yep. like that? Hardware sprite support, sprite collision. I've got four. Um, background layers that you can scroll independently. So I can give you a demo of that later. Yeah, that'd be great. How about sound generation? Is that uh, on I've there? I've got as a well? sound port here. Okay. Uh, it's it's really simple right now, but. And have you created a, an SDK for it? How does somebody develop for it? It's just an Arduino library. So okay. I'm piggybacking on top of the Arduino system. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That's why I went with Arduino because it's so popular these days. Right. And when you write for this uh, Arduino, are you writing in C? What are you writing? Yeah, C. C. Okay. So that's a widely known uh, language. Yep. Uh, did you do any uh, of your own libraries, or is it all Arduino, existing Arduino libraries? Well, I had to write my own to interface with all the hardware, right, with the right. SD card and the FPGA. Right. Can you give us a demo? Yeah, sure. So the first demo I'm going to show you is a landscape demo. It shows the four different layers. The cool thing about the uh, Arduino is it probably has as much processor as those... 20th century game consoles yeah, did, right? Yeah, far more, probably. <laughs> but now you can fit this in a nice little package. Right, right. Okay, so it, it should be loading the landscape demo. So we're going to pick that up off of your Mac. Oh, yeah, oh there look at go. that. Yeah, All so, right. Okay, so th in, that, in that one you can see the clouds are going one way and the, the landscape is going the other way. So you have two scroll buffers? 
I have four different layers. Four, four uh, layers, and buffer, they can scroll independently. Yeah. Now, I only have a line buffer, so it's actually drawing it one line at a time wow. and scanning it out, because I don't have enough memory on here right. for a whole frame buffer. Right. So, uh, and that would that in RAM, or is that in its own uh, uh, graphics? It has RAM. internal RAM, the okay. PGA, but I also have external RAM to store the images. The game, the, images. the ROM, yeah. Yeah. So how much RAM? Half a megabyte. Okay, that's plenty, probably. For a 2D game, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And how big a game could you write a could you write a Sonic the Hedgehog? You could. On this one, this is the uh, Arduino Uno. Yeah. It's pretty small, but you can get an Arduino Mega or a Dewey. Those are much bigger. So, you, so the size of the ROM, I mean, the size of the Flash, that's the limit of how big of a so game. So, what you can are you write. selling here? Are you selling these custom boards that add on to the Arduino board? Yeah, yeah. If you look at it, this is the Arduino, and there's two shields. These expansion boards are called shields, and they go on top of it. So you designed the shields. Yeah. Yeah. I drew them myself. Yeah. And where is your uh, where is your crowd uh, funding uh, project on? Where is it's on Kickstarter. It's on Kickstarter. Name is Duino Cube. Duino Cube. So you can just go to my website, and I put a link there. DuinoCube.com. Kickstarter. And how much is it? For this pair of shields, it's eighty. But I have another package that seems to be really uh, more popular right now. It's got these two plus an Arduino Mega and a gamepad. Now, I see Pac-Man, for instance, on your uh, demo on Kickstarter, but you don't come with any software, just the tools to create your own games. Yeah, so those right? are just examples that I wrote. Right. And so people right. can look at them and see how it's done. So you give them the code, the source code for those? Yeah. Oh, that's Close great. That. It's okay. All okay, so they do get that. Good. And who's your competition? Do you have anybody else out there that you're competing directly against? Yeah, no one big, because this is just a small hobbyist space. Yeah. So there's, there's things like the Gambi, the... Um, the ooze box, they're all based on these 8-bit microcontrollers. Is it different than an emulator? Yes. So tell absolutely. me how it differs from an emulator. So an emulator runs on the computer and it... It's all software. Yeah, and it's meant to mimic the architecture of, say, a, a Sega right. or SNES. That's why you could take an existing ROM and just load it in the yeah, emulator. Yeah, you're running a virtual It doesn't machine. know it's not on an, on an SNES. Exactly, right. exactly. Right. So this is its own, because Arduino is, is it ARM-based? What is it? This one is AVR-based. AVR. AVR. The bigger, one of the bigger ones is ARM-based. Okay. But that, but that doesn't matter, because you're going to use the C++. live, you're going to write yeah. it in C++. So, so I have a question. Why would I choose this over my iPad apps? I mean, I can play it's any kind of... It's not for you. It wouldn't yeah. be for me, Once but I'm just play? trying to... Huh? Huh? Well, but yeah, you can say it's not for me. It's not for me. So I'm asking right. the question of, I can buy apps for 99 cents. Why would I want to do this? Well, you you'll get this if you want to make your own games, okay. not to play them, but just to it's just for the experience. Because yeah, that's how I got into hobbies. learning programming. Right. I'm a right. my day job is as is a software engineer. Well, clearly you want to build it, but then don't you want to play it? Sure. Isn't that why you're building it? No. Or you can show it off. <laughs> and for some people, it's just the it's the, the thrill of accomplishment, right? You know? Making it, yeah. And okay. the learning experience. And I'm sure there's plenty of kids in high school out there, high school, college, who are going through the same thing. They 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 got into games and then they realized they can make their own games, and that's how they learn programming. So you you were asking for fifty thousand dollars, is that? Oh no, no eighty thousand uh, dollars. You've got seventeen days to go as we record this. Yes. Only seventeen backers, only thirteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Is it too small a market for uh, for what you're asking? I'm not sure, but I chose the eighty thousand net because it was the price of this eighty times a thousand. That's so how you much make I make a thousand of them. Yeah. yeah, that would be economical to make right. in the factory. Right. Okay. And I don't. I really don't want to have, say, a hundred. And it has to make it for a higher price per unit. Right. So it's really got to make this clear. This is for an Arduino hobbyist. Yes. He's looking for the tools that he or she can write their tools own. Tools and a platform. And yes. a platform that they can write their own game software yeah. for. A simple platform. Right. Without an. Not even for a gamer particularly. It's for somebody who wants to learn how to game program or wants exactly. to write game programs. Yeah. Yeah, and that's it's like a gateway drug. It takes you into programming, into becoming a programmer. Or a software what grade engineer. did you get, Simon, on your? Uh, Hey, on your project. Good. <laughs> That's a good sign. It means right. it works, right? That's right. <laughs> and you've graduated or are you just about to graduate? I graduated a long time ago. Oh, this is a long <laughs> time ago. All right. Yeah, it's a revived project. Ah, fun. Fun. Um, and, and what about output? What, what are the options for outputting to video? Oh, the video? Right now it's just the VGA, so it's okay. analog. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you could, So pretty much any monitor, any computer monitor can take it. So, so one, one project that somebody could do, for example, is you could build an old school style console, get a bunch of plywood, build a whole thing, put a screen there, and, and you could actually... Like an arcade machine? Exactly. Yeah, you could machine. do that. You could yeah. make a meme. The real challenge uh, for this 
is that for somebody to buy into this, they have to understand how, there's there is other people doing similar things. They have to understand how good you are, how good the software, the tools, the platform are, and that's hard to judge by looking at a, a Kickstarter page or watching a video. There's a certain leap of faith, isn't there, for somebody who's going to buy this? Yeah, and I posted a an early draft of the user manual, so hopefully it's that's a good sign. There's documentation. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's one thing a lot. And, and you'll, also, don't you'll also um, rely on reviews because people, if people see credible reviewers saying that this is great or whatever, that's going to be something people can base a, a decision to purchase on. So is that, has anybody reviewed this, and what are your plans for getting more reviews? I've, posted, I've given press releases to a few Internet sites. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a handful of press out there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're no actual reviews. Okay. We should give the, uh, let's get Glenn up here and give uh, people a chance to vote on this, because I think this one's a little maybe beyond our area of expertise. Uh -oh. So if you want to vote, go to strawpoll.me slash 1670540. And of course, you can ask questions at bit.ly slash IFT questions. Jeff Needles has a question. Uh, he wants to know, why not Raspberry Pi? Well, Raspberry Pi is a different space. If you want to work with Linux, then by all means, go with Raspberry Pi. But this is meant to be... Um, bare hardware. So if you write software, it run, it can access the hardware directly. Um, it's two different things. Yeah, yeah. Now, and when you say platform, you are in a way providing an operating system, though, for this. Well, it depends on your definition of operating system. Okay. I mean, yeah, it doesn't have to do disk access, obviously, but yeah, there, how, there's no. What kind of support services do you provide? What do you mean? Well, for the developer, he's he's. I guess if you're used to Arduino development, this would be the same. You would just have some additional hardware services available to you and additional libraries available to you? Is that what yeah, it would look like? It's an Arduino library that goes right. on top of the existing right. right. Arduino but stuff. I agree with Mike. I think because this is, you know, you have clearly you're standing up here explaining it to us that if you got this in the hands of some people that do reviews or are in this space, that might help elevate this product. Mm -hmm. So it's not a bad idea. I have a question for you as well that, that you know, you, you're showing us a product. So there's the product. And let's say that the product is awesome. What are you doing around the construction of a business? I guess is my question. Yeah, are you ready you want a to be a business that sells these things? I was thinking of this as a one-shot deal. Okay. So, so you back it. You're going to make a thousand of them. The backers then, will get them. And then and your and job's that's all? done. Yeah. And you have a, a job. So what's your yes. goal for you work at doing Google, this? Don't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but what's your goal for doing this then? If is it just to encourage and try to get people out there to learn how to program and well, first, I, I thought it would be a cool project to just put out there and see if anyone bites, uh, because I went through trouble of making it. And I think it gives me some visibility as far as what I'm able to do, because right now, my resume is just all software, and I like to diversify out of it. Cool. Okay. What do you do at Google? I'm a software engineer. I work on some of the awesome. internal profiling stuff. Oh, that's great. Nothing and, on my And they about. don't own this? How is that? <laughs> I got it approved. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, of course you did. <laughs> so just for people, you certainly could go to the Kickstarter page, but I'm looking at the Kickstarter yeah. page. You could use as little as an Uno, but it will work with a Mega. Uh, and a spot, Explora, is that the what it's called? Yeah, yeah. the Explora is the other one that has the, the gamepad interface. Got it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Duet compatibility. Yeah. But that's not a, that's a stretch goal. You'd have to reach out. How much money for that? Is that a stretch goal? That's what I, it I says on it here, is. yeah. Mm -hmm. Arduino do a compatibility is a stretch goal. Okay. You don't even remember writing that, do you? <laughs> I spent so long making the video, I forgot. <laughs> uh, and I, so the problem is, of course, this is a product for a specific niche. Yes. Not us, mm -hmm. but for uh, people who want to do this kind of thing with Arduino. I have to say the fact that you have documentation mm -hmm. uh, is impressive. And I think if anybody were looking at this, to look at your documentation online would tell them a lot mm -hmm. about, A, what they could do, but also your commitment to the project and to making it easy for them to do what they want to do, give them a better idea of mm -hmm. what exactly they're getting. And I think that's that's a big step forward. It's hard for us to judge how well you've done because all I can see is a box and, and a demo, right? I have some well, more demos. We'll do another <laughs> but, demo. Right. Let's but see another demo. I also demo. think it's interesting that he's not doing this to make money. It's yeah. to get it out there for other people Absolutely. to use, which Absolutely. is, I it, it shows me that you're not doing this for money. You're doing it to build your resume to share some knowledge that right. you've already put time yeah, and what commitment are you, a into. What's the deal? So, <laughs> no, no, I like that. Yeah, I mean, no, it's, it's it, but so to me, that it's, yeah. it's it's a very honest thing to do, yeah. and he just wants to share what he's done and hopefully give other people that platform I love that. to learn to yeah. become a programmer. I, I think that's a, a really neat. Let's see another part demo. Of this. I want to see more. All right, of what this can so do. This other one is a side scroller. 
Let me pull that up. How, and how long did it take you to write these games? I mean, how easy is it? Does this make it? Wow, look at that. Yeah, see? That's great. Did you do your own graphics? I pulled the graphics off of a clip art site. Okay. And that character is a sprite? Yeah, so as you, as you can see from the video. Keep uh, showing the video because we want to see this, yeah. You don't have to play it. You can answer the question, but I just want to, I want to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see the the background. There's mm -hmm. it's moving at a slower rate. Mm -hmm. So there's there's, there's several different yep. yeah parallax scrolling exactly. There's several yep. different layers that are being scrolled. How many sprites can I get on the screen at once? There's 256. So wow. there's no, another demo that will show you all the sprites. That's a lot of sprites. That's awesome. That one, yeah. And those are all hardware. That's hardware supported See. sprites or software. Yeah, that, that's all. Holy, in hardware. look at that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you it's can incredible. build your own screensaver. I'd fund that right there. You did it. I wanted to see. That's pretty impressive. Uh, I remember programming at Atari's where you had, I don't know, I can't remember, eight sprites. Yeah. And uh, collision collision detection. and it's maybe because we're uh, old. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so this is, this well, this is roughly the same generation. Mm -hmm. uh, would you say that's about a 6502 capability, something like that? How, how big of a processor is in that? Yeah. Is it 8-bit? It's, it's an 8-bit. It's 16 megahertz. Well, that's pretty fast. That's, yeah. a, lo that's a lot faster. Yeah, it's than faster than SNES. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, so like I said, it's built with modern technology. All right, I'm gonna, I am going to give you uh, my vote. We're, it's a little bit of a leap of faith, but given your, your background at Caltech, where you work today, the demos that you've shown, the capabilities that that, obviously impressive capabilities that hardware has, plus the documentation, I'd say I'd fund that. All right. But you, you did more than just work, go to Caltech, right? Didn't yeah. you go somewhere else? I worked at some other companies, and I got a master's from Stanford. Yeah, oh, you wow. got a master's from Stanford, I'm impressed. Too, so. All right. Player missile graphics. That's right. It wasn't sprites on the Atari. It was player missile graphics. Player, <laughs> what's that? All right, Lisa, what, what is your judgment here? Well, you know, I almost recused myself because I'm like, okay, this is way out of my league, um, and it's not something I really know about. But what I like is that he's giving this to people for an educational. Mm -hmm. Like, he just wants to give back and build his resume on this. So I'm, I'm, I think I'd fund that. I mean, it's not a lot of money, and it's, it's really a give back, and he doesn't even want to grow a business off of it. So I think that's... That's an interesting concept for You'd us. have to be a person who wanted to do this Agreed. software. But to me, I think so this is like... So we're putting ourselves in those shoes, but based on that, I think so, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. Where, that's where I'm like, I'd fund that because to me, it's giving back to people mm -hmm. that hopefully it'll get them interested in programming. And, um, the and 256 sprites sold me. Well, yeah, okay, so... I think that's interesting. So, so you're saying, you're basing your uh, recommendation or your judgment on the quality, uh, the apparent quality and impressiveness of the project itself. You're basing it and weighing it toward the idea that uh, this is a, a great effort that's being put out there for the betterment of mankind, that people can learn things and it's, it's not done for, you know, to, to make a ton of money. And that's, and that's a virtuous thing to do. Right, because he's not planning on making this his business goal. He's exactly. not moving forward with this past this. So Exactly. So, it's, yeah. so here's the problem I have with it. You you have a platform here, mm -hmm. so you're throwing this out there, and you're you're you know you're you're doing it up front, but you're basically saying this is a one shot deal. Mm -hmm. And I think for people to get in in embedded in this and to 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 get behind it, a lot of what you're backing when you back a crowdfunded project is you want a company to get off the ground, especially if they're a platform company. You want to you initiate a platform that will have a future, and so this is the problem I have with this is that you're basically asking people to do something that's like uh, Lego Mindstorms, but we're just going to do one I don't think it's package. always that. I think there are Kickstarter projects where somebody's doing one film, mm -hmm. or they're doing a comic book, or they're doing, uh, you know, a But films and comic books aren't platforms, and so if you're going to take the well, time he's to learn how to do this... It, when he's saying it's a platform, it's not a platform that you would then go on and develop more stuff for. But isn't it's that what to people learn how to be? No, I think they... This is a hobbyist thing. It's something you'd want to learn how to write a video game. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, these are not techniques that are currently used in video games, right. these hardware sprites and things like this. But, but what you would learn is the fundamentals of programming kind of in the past century. Yeah. Actually, though, that's a good question. Simon, why would anybody want to learn that? Because it takes you back to the basics. Think about it. If you have a 2D system, it's really easy to think about. If you have 3D, you got to deal with you know, 3D space, transformations, models. Texture. So this is a starter for somebody who wants to go on, perhaps. Sure. Yeah. I mean, and it's for any Arduino hobbyist who yeah. wants to write yeah, games. But, and but just look at that's all why it's not a it's not a platform that you're going to say somebody's going to make this and and productize it. I don't think you intend this is ever going to have a productize uh, component. 
Yeah, see, and, and this is the this is the problem that I have with it. It's that it's not going to do that. I think that you know I don't see it's not a product. It's not a company. You basically it's a project you have that you want to do for your reasons, and it's going to help some people. It's obviously some people would go in there and enjoy making games and stuff like that. But like I, I feel like there's so much more potential here. You could create an educational product that would be sold to schools indefinitely in the future to teach students, you know, high school students, junior high school students, how to do game development in some fundamental way. I think there's so much potential here that you're not pursuing and you have no intention to pursue. And so I'm going to say, I'm going to say that, uh, you know, go fund yourself because oh. I want to see, I want to see, I want people, you know, dollars are limited. People have only a limited number of things to back. People want to back something with a future and this doesn't have a future by design. It's, it's, and so I'm well, going to say it's 25 to bucks. How much but, am I even dollars? That's okay. That's it's less opinion. than the spritzer uh, phone case. But we, I mean, we didn't I, fund I know, that but either. Not, but but this, is, this is one of many options for learning how to do game development. One of many. Right. And if people are going to fund something, they want to be involved in it. If it's a platform, they want to get into it. And this is not a platform that they can get into. It's not something that's going to have a future. And I think that for a lot of game developers, there are going to be better options out there. So I'm going to say go find yourself. Would so. it make any difference if he said he'd open source it? Uh, it might. All it my might. code is on GitHub. It's all I plan to publish Mike. the uh, schematics. Yeah. Are you going to publish the schematics? Too? I plan to do it you afterwards. You don't have to change well, his mind. He just said, he just said, <laughs> it's, he's, it's, you know. I just, am on a mission to change his no, mind. It's a pseudo-democracy, Leo. <laughs> you, cannot, <laughs> you cannot, like, tell another judge on here, sure oh, you're I wrong. Can. Well, I mean, you can, but. I, I absolutely can. Doesn't mean my opinion's going to change Mike either. Mike says we should let the yeah, tie-breaking let's, let's vote come let's from hear the people. Actually, in this one wins, because this has two. That's right. Well, this would decide it. Okay, so this is interesting, and this perhaps is demonstrative of how, you know, People in the chat are saying, open the poll right away. This is why we don't open the polls yeah, until you this saw is gone this, a bit. You might not know what this was until you really heard Simon explain Agreed. it. Let me tell you, this started as a strong go fund yourself. However, now, 53% go fund yourself to 47%. I'd fund that, and I'd fund that has been raising. The longer this has gone on, Yeah, the more but it doesn't matter. It. That we just won. Well, well, but these we polls don't, will remain open. But we don't let people vote twice. Wait, wait, wait. So, so if you voted prematurely... And you voted wrong, and I saw at least one or two people in the chat room who said, "Boy, now that I know what it is, mm -hmm. is I well, like it." Well, that's why we went down that road to figure out what yeah. was what was happening. Yeah. So, so where's the votes land right now? I'll be the right the now bad it's, judge that says we're ending it. It's f f God, it's 53, uh, 52 percent. It keeps going, fifty two percent to forty eight. Go find yourself. Any questions for Simon? Well, people are having questions. They're talking about it in the chat, and it's interesting as you're discussing, and people are saying this would be great for schools, great opportunities there. Um, you know, I think what it's really coming down to is is that people are, much as you guys are exploring it with Simon, seeing more of the potential. Uh, there is one specific question that Derek Murray has. He wants to know, can this run on batteries? And if so, what's the power drain? One of my stretch goal ideas was to have a battery adapter. So right now it's running off of USB but you can have another shield on top that has batteries. Cool. And people have done something like that before, yeah. just as a standalone shield. Yeah. I mean, I think really the value of this is if somebody wants to wants to learn about game programming, if you're a high schooler or I guess even a college kid or an adult, and you want to learn about game programming from the beginning, from the roots, from the basics, from 2D scrollers, to understand how collision works, how sprites work, how how uh, you know you can create parallax? Um, you don't have to be an artist. You you use clip art, which I think is is incredible. But what you're learning is how this works, and I think that it's an interesting point that it is the first step towards learning how to do modern programming. And I don't uh, understand why I can never get you to do sales. You're so good at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, but it's you know, it's yeah. Go fund your company. Leo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I the the point is really that this isn't a company. And this, what I, what I really hope is that, the, that you find the audience, because uh, I think that there are probably a thousand people. You need, to, you need a thousand, right? That's all. Yeah. I think there are a thousand people who would be thrilled to have this, who understand what it does, and they'd like to play with it. But you've got to find that audience. I hope that we've helped you, uh, maybe get the word out a little bit. How's the poll doing? I'm just trying to give you time here, Glenn. One vote. <laughs> no, wait, it's tied. It's tied, uh, ladies and gentlemen. 50 50. <laughs> it's wavering no, it's back not. and forth. Go fun yourself just went up. Yeah. <laughs> it's 59 to 58. It is tough. Well, see, you know, these polls will remain open in perpetuity. So, no. but wait, wait, wait. So, so wow. going forward for future shows, we can't do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't, that's a straw poll limitation, not a. 
I, I know that, but we can't we can't end a show with somebody winning or losing and then change it after the show is over. Yeah. So we're gonna have to figure something. I yeah. think Simon's a winner no matter what you guys say. It's a tie, ladies it's and gentlemen. It's a tie. It is exactly a tie. <laughs> no, it's actually. You know yeah, what? No, kinda... he's a winner. You know why? Because people are seeing this, and you. He's watch a winner because Leo Laporte actually seven, stood on his soapbox seven, for 25 minutes and said, "You guys have to agree with me." Days, so you know. He's going to get another thousand people to pledge 25 bucks, and or whatever it is that you need to get to 80. 80, 80 yeah. bucks. Well, it's a little expensive, but. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> If <laughs> All right, I think we're done. <laughs> okay, half what, those votes are wrong. But what's what's our I'm not conclusion? Tell you which half. Up, though. <laughs> up, up. We have fifty-one percent. I'd fund it's that. It's pulling ahead. All right. Well, I'm I'm gonna pull whatever rank I have at this table. <laughs> I'm and fine say with that. that's it. The people have spoken. Fifty-one percent. We're gonna fund that. You get the badge. It was this there you congratulations? Go. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. And Simon. it took Leo going. That's okay, right. for all my people I'm in my pushing. chat room, you need to change I'm your vote. Question for the programmers, <laughs> for the young kid out there who says, "I want to write a side scroller. I just need the hardware to do it. I'm I need the software. You, I can make the money platform. on him. Yeah. I could totally make money Get, on him. Put him on the road. <laughs> I need to. All Let's right, go. Well, congratulations to you. It's an awesome Thanks. product. And uh, well done, Simon. I'm actually very impressed. Also, congratulations on the A. And, and <laughs> congratulations on getting Google to approve you doing your own thing. That's I thought really nice. when you work for Google, yeah. they own you. So it's yeah. nice to see that they don't. Is this a way out? There's loopholes. Is this a 20 percent or a sabbatical project, like or you just this is a side project, nights and weekends? That's awesome. 30 really hours a nice. week. 30 hours a week on yeah. this. That's okay. a labor of love, isn't it? Yeah. That's awesome. So that's a and, wrap. And congratulations, that, right? Simon. Yeah. Another win for Caltech. MIT can suck it, right? <laughs> there you go. MIT <laughs> sucks. Let's focus love on important it. things. That's what's Actually, really they're counts. both good. Come on, All guys. Right. All right. All right. Well, Put thank on the you. Hat. I like how you said MIT can suck. What's it. my that's name? Well done. Hey, that was a lot of fun. That was. This is going to be a great show. Congratulations. It's yeah. going to be a great show. We just spent a million dollars. You're kidding. I No. I wouldn't fund that. Funding that. Good job, guys. Uh, and thank you, wow. you right. know, Glenn, Glenn Carsten, and Tanya. Yep. This is actually a team of three people. They really well, did a great job of pulling of it together. Getting all those people in here. Yeah. Right. yeah. Getting me and the hats. Congratulations to Ozzy for controlling himself during the dog food demo. <laughs> yes. A little too much, that's, actually. That's a little, bit, a little bit much. We expected that. Well, this has been our first uh, beta issue. I guess we call it beta. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is this a is beta, alpha, but this alpha. is actually that's a really right. exceptional beta, I think. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we're going to put this fun. We're going to put this out there, and so a lot of audience is going to see this after. They're going to see the Good. recording. Right. Good. And so I think we're going to drive a lot of funding I here. I hope so. And so thank you all for joining us. Some better names, though. Will Laporte, Lisa Kensell, <laughs> Mike Elgin. See you Thank later. You very much. I'd, bye fun bye. That. I'd fund that. I'd so fund that. I'd fund that. I'd fund that. Even I would fund that. <laughs> oh, wait. No, I'd fund that. It's thumbs up. Oh, wait. Wrong thumb. I oh, know. I got the right one. <laughs> all right. Okay. We're all thumbs today.